Hello, my name is Mike and I will be teaching you today how to make games. Now in this set of tutorials we will be using a program called Game Maker and uh, this website here is called www.yoyogames.com and it is the website which hosts Game Maker and everything affiliated with Game Maker and whatnot. So uh, what you want to do to get started is download Game Maker 8.1 Lite. You can do that by clicking here. Um, the first 10 parts of this tutorial will be concentrated around the Lite version of this tutorial, but after that I will branch on to uh, certain aspects which will require the full version. So if you uh, really do want to learn how to make full games, then I strongly suggest that you buy this. It's a really cheap program and it makes game making very easy considering it does the difficult stuff for you because there's a great misconception about how games are made and um, games are often made in C um, and uh, that is quite a complicated programming language. This makes games very easy. It comes with its own drag and drop interface which makes simple things very easy but it also has the power to do much more. So um, what we're going to do here is just click download and uh, this will download, I've already got it installed so I'm just going to cancel that and uh, close this browser. So um, when you're done you'll get something that looks like this and uh, this is Game Maker. Um, it's sort of a G-Cog kind of logo design and um, I'm doing this tutorial completely off the bat and that is the wrong version of Game Maker, that is the old version. So I'm going to run Game Maker a one sorry about that. But I'm going to be doing this completely off the uh, top of my head. A lot of, a lot of developers um, or tutorial makers rather uh, often post like tutorials of projects they've already made they're just redesigning it they've got it like open on another monitor and whatnot but I'm not going to do that I'm going to show you my live reaction to the game um, and basically this is the game make interface what you probably want to start by doing is you see this thing here that's called advanced mode this will toggle um, whether some of these things show it doesn't really matter it won't really change your understanding of the program at all it might make it a little bit easier to manage with so if you want a slightly easier interface just click that and turn advanced mode off it will prompt you when you first launch the program now um, a lot of the uh, good features in this program such as 3d um, and uh, effects are only available in the pro version of the program uh, which is really powerful. Um, the light version is still pretty powerful and you can do a lot with it uh, but it's just quite limited um, like on the on the fact that you can't really do much. So uh, what we've got here is these are all your resources. Um, this button is to test the game once you've made the game. This is to run the game. Now uh, games use things called sprites. These are the graphics in your game. So like your character will have a sprite. Uh, this can be animated um, or not and um, if I open this basically when you edit it you get a little editor like this uh, to, you can click the button to create a new frame for a sprite so if your like, sprite is animated um, you can have them do different things so what we're going to do to start with is just draw a basic circle this is just a simple little graphics editor like paint uh, you can import any pretty much any f graphic file type but for ease of purpose I'm just going to draw some random little dude, uh, I'm not going to spend too much time on the detail because it is really not important at this juncture. Uh, as you can see, it really does not matter what you do, but this is only a tutorial, so this is just the very beginnings of um, your game making career. So let me just take you through the image editor. What we've got here is we've got a collision mask. Um, this isn't important for this tutorial, but in future tutorials there's going to be uh, collisions needed. And this pretty much determines how your uh, sprite will interact with uh, the environment around it. Basically, a rectangular uh, collision mask will often fill the whole box. Um, so if you imagine a square hitting into something else, um, that is the easiest way to imagine it. Uh, this is like sort of just similar to real life. If you imagine flash games and whatever, physics games, um, you see the wheels uh, when they collide with stuff, um, they collide perfectly and when you've got a precise collision mask that's exactly what that does. But that's enough time and sprites, for now it's not really important but what I want you guys to get into a good habit of doing is putting SPR in front of all of your uh, all of your names. So uh, I'm going to call this SPR player because it is a player. SPR is just a uh, shortened version of sprites. Now the other thing that we're really going to use in this tutorial is objects. Um, this is an object. This object is basically where everything happens. Um, 
what you do is each each sprite is don't do anything on their own they're just graphical values in this and uh, to make an object what you do is you click this little ball icon and um, these objects will have code inside them and this code can be used to make them move make them do whatever you want them to do in the game and uh, I won't be getting straight into code this first tutorial because this is designed for beginners so I'm going to use the drag and drop interface for this first tutorial so you guys can get a grasp of how the program works before we don't jump into the deep end um, but basically what you want to do is select the graphic for this from your sprite list when you click this button it will just come up with this list and then you select the sprite from that and now when we place the player in our room uh, which is this thing uh, we can create a room just by doing that and for now we're just going to leave the default you can click here and just click to place these objects because this is the player object we only want one of him um, just to make it easier so um, basically this is the player and um, this is what we've got going here so uh, there are different types of events in Game Maker the create event is what happens when the game first begins and when this object first appears in the room um, for this we don't really want to do anything because we don't need to all I'm going to do is create a variable called score and we can do this by taking set variable type in the word score um, because uh, this is the variable we're going to use and put the value as zero this will mean that your score is set to zero and uh, this very com variable can be called whatever you could call this whatever that is click OK and then you can use that variable but that's not very practical because you don't really know what it means uh, the step event is where everything happens so um, in a game uh, things like keyboard inputs will happen in the step event now there are other ways to do keyboard inputs using these three functions here but that uh, tends to be uh, that well that tends to be a better way to do it really because it keeps this a bit cleaner but what this will contain is just other stuff like other interesting things um, such as like the player rotating towards the mouse the players collisions the players physics and whatever not this game won't require too many uh, physics just because it will be quite a simple little game all it's going to be is a room full of a little balls that you have to pick up and um, that's basically how it works so at the moment all we have here is the create event and we set the score to zero now uh, for now that's all we need so if we go back to our room here we've got a room now if we run the game what will happen is we'll get this now this isn't anything very impressive it doesn't do anything in the moment because we haven't told it to do anything uh, what happens here is it's just a blank room with a sprite object whatever you want to call it here now uh, game is quite good because it lets you click escape to end the game but now we're going to start adding some movement so um, what we want to do is get the player to move around based on what keys you press so um, what I'm going to add is a keyboard function for pressing up now what we will do here is this thing here these are the move functions here uh, these allow you to move so what this is going to do is um, you select the direction you want the player to move in uh, in this case because we're pressing up we'll select the up arrow obviously and set the speed to about three because uh, that's a good average now we will do the same for down um, well first we'll write and then we'll do left as well and just to finish off we will do down so now once you've added all the uh, directions here you can go on and um, this will just basically uh, allow the player to move around the room so now when we go and play the game if we type on the keyboard the player will move around the room now as you notice the um, actually that time the down key I didn't type, do that properly I forgot to select the direction if you notice then um, the player kept on moving when we released the keys um, you probably can't see that because I'm not filming anything but what you want to do as well is on a no key event which means that there's no key being pressed you want to set this to zero this stops the player from moving. So now, if we run the game again, we'll notice that when we don't, we're not pressing anything. The player will stop moving. Now, uh, this is really simple stuff, and um, it's not too hard to get the grasp of. All the files in this tutorial will be involved in the, like, will be saved in the uh, tutorial folder, which I'm going to create now. Um, And um, inside this, I'm just going to call this tutorial one basics part one. Mm. 